Hi, coaches. Uh, we're just getting ready to get going here. I'm just going to wait around and make sure that we get uh, as many coaches on as possible. Uh, we've had a very good response, actually, from all the, uh, the emails that were sent out. So it's going to be uh, uh, fun, and it's going to be interesting to see how many, uh, how many coaches we actually uh, get on here. But we're expecting 60, 70 uh, coaches tonight to join in, so uh, that's great. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we're, we're broadcasting from the middle of a bush here in Canada, so sometimes the Internet is a little bit in and out. So sometimes when I flip into 3D mode, uh, when I'm showing, I'm showing a drill or showing a part of a drill or in 3D, it might seem a little bit choppy, but uh, trust me, that's just the Internet and, and not the app uh, that's, that's doing that to us. Uh, so uh, the format tonight is, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to uh, open up. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go into the app, and I'm going to show you a, a, a couple of drills and just a couple of things before we get going on the main part of the uh, presentation, which is going to be on uh, tips and tricks, just basically working on technique, uh, hoping that I can show you a few things tonight that's going to help your drill drawing technique, and uh, just a, a couple of things that will help you and hopefully save you time when you're, uh, you're doing your drills and that. So, uh, without further delay, I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch over right now. I'm going to share my screen with you and, uh, and go right into um, the uh, the app. So uh, you should all have the app up in front of you right now. And I'm just going to click on and open up some animations. So while we're uh, waiting for everybody to get on, first thing I want to talk about about tonight is just uh, how you save a little time that I do. If you're doing drills uh, or tactical files that have different outcomes or you want to create different options, and we'll take a look at this uh, three-on-one, three-wide drive drill, which is a very, it's a very nice little drill uh, that's suitable for players of, I would say, Wee, uh, AAA up. Uh, but you start out when you create a drill like this, and I know I'm going to create several options for it, so we'll just run this drill. And this is just a, a basic drill to work on on a forwards using a three wide drive technique when entering the offensive zone. So when they get up to the blue line, want to kick out past the wide side. Outside, I've got a wide dot drive, drive the net for rebounds. So I would, I would now stop right there, and I would go down here, and I would duplicate. This is where I use my duplicate button, and I make that duplicate, so I save all that work. So I use that as my base. So the next thing that I would do is create this part of it. So this is the same one, but this is a three, three wide drive, but I'm going to run it both directions. So the drill starts exactly the same. It's going to go same, but what I've done now is I've added uh, other players. I've added another line of players in there, and they're going to run exactly the same drill in the other direction. So this is just uh, showing you how you would use the same drill working both ends of the ring. So we'll just kick out of that. And again, that was based on the first one. And then from that first one, the first three wide drive, then I, I created another duplicate for it, and I doubled it up, and I create this one. So this is a three-on-two version of it, but only going in one direction. So from the same basic template, I created a template with that first three-on-one wide drive, and then from then I duplicate it. And then I can edit it and change it and make it, you know, different scenarios for it. So this one is a three-on-two version of that same drill. So by using that, using that uh, duplicate key, you can save yourself a lot, of, a lot of time. And one other place where I find it really useful is in tactical files. For example, uh, with power play breakouts, if I'm designing a power play breakout or I'm showing a power play breakout another team might be using, I'll show that as a five-on-O and then I'll duplicate it. And then I might create several samples of it or several different versions of it with the, the penalty killers in it. So I might show different four checks or different things we might do against it. So that duplicate uh, button is really useful. So another thing that you've used for, and I know that we have a lot of uh, youth coaches. We have coaches from all different categories. We have Adam coaches all the way up to pro coaches today, and that's great. But one thing we do, like with our youth organizations, is that we create, uh, we create skill circuits or templates. Okay, so on these skill circuits, uh, this one, this is for, from our U8 program. And you can see there's a lot of action going on, on the ice. What I want you to note for sure is this tire game, this two-on-two -two tire game on the top left. And then you have a little two-on-two -two game going down here in the bottom right. And then between the other four stations are different, various different drills that you put in there. Now, what takes the most time to do with those templates are the small area games. So what I will do is I will create... A template and I will create one here let's play one with the two-on-two -two tire hockey and then the two-on-two -two, uh, game down here 
and then leave the other areas. Just put in the players ready to create uh, different drills in different zones. And uh, you can save yourself an enormous amount of work doing this. So when you have these templates, you, you duplicate it, and then you fill it in, and then you save that. Or you save and you put in one or two other drills and create another template. So by creating templates, you can save yourself a lot of, a lot of work. And that's one of the things that we're going to, uh, to talk about uh, today when we're doing uh, the drills that we're going to do. So let's get right into it. So tonight's talk, we're going to talk about uh, drill drawing technique and different things that I do to try to make the drills look as lifelike as possible. And there'll be an opportunity here, coaches, uh, to put in uh, questions. We'd ask you, like in the emails, uh, to send in some questions. Uh, you'll have, there'll be a point in the uh, presentation uh, tonight where I'll say, okay, open up the questions, fire your questions off, and we'll try to get as, to, as many as possible, answer as many as we, we can right on air. Uh, if not, we will get back to you uh, one way or the other to answer all your questions. So first thing, we're going to work on this drill. I'm going to show you what, what the finished drill looks like. So we're going to work on this stretch pass 2 on 0 drill is the one that we're going to create. So this is the drill. And this has uh, audio on it as well, so I'm just going to let this play, and you should be able to hear the audio on it, uh, my voice, as I'm, I'm describing this drill while it's playing. Anyone steps up over the blue line back shop and makes a pass to four, one and dips down, cuts up, makes a pass, gets F3 cutting high at the blue line. They drive in two on O. After the pass by the D, he goes to the wall, gets the pass up from the low forward down below low, shoots through the screen, and the other forward drives and throws it down. This is a continuous drill. Coaching points on this one are take, take passes by everyone. Forwards call for the pass. Defenseman, when you're shooting the puck, keep it low so you can reflect by the forward. Strike with them for rebounds. Okay, so now that's the first version of it. So that's the two on no version. But what I do is when I create a version like that, because I know I'm going to create a two against one version of it, is that I'll go partway through that drill, I'll save it, and then I'll duplicate it. And then I'll finish one version of it one way, and then I'll finish the second version the other way. So this is what the two-on-one version looks like now of the very same drill, but now we're going to add defenders. D1 steps up, pivots backwards, takes a pass from forward one. Forward one curls in, takes a pass, and then headbands it up to number two on a stretch pass. Number one D now goes to the wall, takes a pass up, shoots through the screen, and then turns to take the two-on-one coming the other direction. Okay, so you, you get the idea. So by using that duplicate, uh, that duplicate button, you can save yourself a lot of work. So what I'd like to do right now is just take you through. This is the exact same drill. This is the two on old drill. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go into edit mode right now. And <clears throat> the biggest challenge that I have tonight, coaches, is that I want to get as much information out there as possible without overwhelming everybody. And I also want to go slow enough that everybody can kind of understand what, what I'm talking about and what I'm doing, okay? So first of all, I'm going to use this as a template. And I, what I did is I duplicated the two on O. I duplicated this one here. And then what I did is I just, with, in edit mode, I just walked back all of, the, uh, all of the players, all the passes, all of the shots, back right to the start of the drill. So now when I go into edit mode and I click on the drill, okay, I'm ready to start drawing. So just a couple of things about placing objects on the ice rink. First of all, you can see up here that the next player that I, I add to the ice rink is going to be number seven. It's going to be colored red. It's going to be a left-hander. It's going to be a forward. So when I touch the uh, playing surface, automatically that player is going to be facing to the right every time. Well, it's really important, coaches, I think, that to have the drills look really nice and clean is to have all the players in the right position and all the players facing the right direction before you start. And how to do that is I click on that player to activate it, and I grab the, the turning wheel here, and I'll spin it around to the direction I want that player to face, and then I'll move that player in tight up in line against the other player and then click the ice to surface. The same thing when I'm placing pucks. Okay, by default, when I go to place pucks, it's going to be one puck at a time. So a little trick that I've learned over the years that saves a lot of time is I'll drop the, the puck on the, on the playing surface, and then I'll click on the puck to activate it, and then I will drag it into the, the coach or the player in this case. Because what happens sometimes if I try to drop that puck sometimes right on the stick, it lights up the player. So it just, it's just a more efficient way of doing it. So you can place your, you know, your piles of pucks in there and, and then you're ready to go when all your pucks are in place. So now we're ready to start drawing the drill. Okay, so all my objects are in place. They're all facing the right direction. My pucks are on sticks. So now I go into action mode. So the first thing we're going to start, and when you're looking at uh, uh, more 
how should we say, uh, not complicated drills, but more advanced drills. Uh, they're not a whole lot different than your average line drills. You just have to think of doing them in little pieces. And the biggest thing, coaches, the biggest tip I can give you tonight is that when you do it, do it in little pieces. Like every three or four moves, check your work. I mean, as many, as many uh, drills and tactical files that I've done, uh, I still mess up. So it's a good thing to, to check your timing, make sure everything is done every three or four clicks or every three or four movements that you make. So first thing we're going to do is get the defenseman in motion. So I'm going to click on defenseman number one, and we're going, to, we're going to move the defenseman. You can see up here at speed. We're going to leave him in a default 20 kilometers an hour. And what I want to do is I want to take a good angle for this pivot. I'm going to pivot at the blue line. So I'm going to go wide, and before I start my pivot, I'm going to go up, and I'm just going to start to turn like this so it looks natural. And then when I go to pivot, I'm going to go up, I'm going to hit backwards. And then just by dragging, dragging my, my arrow a little bit, I can get that player to, to go and, and go the right direction. And then I'm going to move that player side to side a little bit to make him really look like he's skating backwards. So, uh, so first thing I'd like to talk about is on the pivot here. When that player pivots, okay, when I click on this, when I click down here on the timing line down here, I can choose which way I want that player to pivot, right or left. So when I go back into this and I'm checking, okay, I'm going to check that pivot to make sure that the player is pivoting the right direction. Pivot comes up, turns to the right, perfect, okay? So now the player's in position. So the next thing I'm going to do is I need to get my player one moving. So I'm going to click on player number one, my forward number one. And some players, some coaches like to, to move it and then take it and go. I prefer to take it right away. And then I'll add one timing spot to, so that I can time the exact same time when I want that, coach, that uh, player to leave. And then I'll click down on the playing or on the timing dot down below and slide it to the right. Now, as you can see, as I slide that to the right, the starting time of that player, you can see number one advancing. Okay? So when, that, when number one gets to about here, I'm going to start number one moving, okay? And then you can see where this gray timing dot on here, which is very useful, and we'll talk more about that. I'm going to now get number one moving, and I can see as I move number one where that timing dot is. So right about there, I'm going to make my pass, okay? I'm going to make my pass to defenseman number one. And number one, defenseman one now, I'm going to still continue skating backwards. He's going to skate backwards a little bit here, taking the pass. I turn just slightly. I pivot to forward. Again, drag, drag the, uh, the arrow so that it's going to turn the right way. And then I'm going to turn that uh, defense number one up ice to make the return pass. Now, the next part is I'll come down to number one, and we'll get the timing right on this one. So now, as I click on number one, and I move number one lower, I can see the gray dot. I can see this gray dot moving along here to see exactly where that defenseman is. So right about here, I'm going to turn it up ice so that right at this point right here, the timing, these, the gray dot is now right in the middle of number one, so I know that these two are pretty much at the same time. And I want this uh, player number one, the forward, to be a little bit in, in front when he receives the pass because I want this player to make the pass out in front. So I'm just going to advance number one a little bit here, and then I click number one, I click pass, and you can see where that gray dot is right here on it, so that should be about right, and I click pass there, and then I'm going to have player one step up, and he's going to make a pass to number two up here. Now this is where the timing point comes in, is to get the timing correct. So when I click on number two, by default, every time that any, all these players start, their timing line is always going to start at zero seconds. So I need to advance the first timing point of, of, player, of forward number two to the point where that, the player number two is going to advance and then take off at the right time. So when I'm looking right about, right about here, okay, when, these, when the, other, the first two players get to this position, I'm going to start number two skating. and He's going to be the stretch man on this play. So now I'm going to have him drive down, okay, and across the blue line. And you can see right there, you can see the gray dot going into number one. Let me go back, and I'll show that again. As I'm advancing number one, you can watch, watch this gray dot down here advance on, on forward number one's timeline. And you can see as I'm moving it across here, I know exactly where number one is. So right about there, we're at the same timeline. So I'm going to advance number two just a little bit more. 
And then when I click on number one, I can see at this time when I'm going to make the pass exactly where that little gray timing dot is. So this timing should be perfect. I want to make this pass when this player is right here so the player receives the pass right here. Now, I hope that's clear for everybody how you use these little gray timing dots. They're very useful for setting up the timing. So now I click on pass and I click on number two to finish the pass. And now he's going to drive into the zone, drive wide into this area right here. And number one is going to drive to the middle zone. I can see the gray dot going, so I'm going to drive in behind. Number two, a little bit wider, and then get up right into this position right about here where they're in the same, uh, the same area. And then go a little bit further for the pass. Now, let's just check the timing on that. Okay. So defenseman number one steps up and backs off. Number one makes the pass, does a little button hook up and then hits number two coming across. And if the timing is correct, you should see no change in speed, okay? So now we're gonna leave the forwards for right now, this part of the drill, and we're gonna work down here on this part of the drill on the defenseman to, to get this. And it's very important you do things in sequence to have them work out the way you want. So we know that after this one, number one, after that pass, is gonna head over to the wall, and he's gonna take a pass from down below. Now. I'm going to slow that player down a little bit. If I, click on, if I click on this player, you'll see by default that player is going 20 kilometers an hour. Well, after that pass, I'm going to have him come over there at about 17, 16 kilometers an hour. And then I want that player to stop to take the pass. So what I'll do is I'll go up and I'll add one, two timing points. Sometimes you can go away, get away with one, but I find by adding two timing points, it's never going to be an issue and it solves a lot of problems. So now, Player number, uh, defenseman number one's ready for the pass. So now we have to work on this part, the lower part down here, where this coach is going to make a bank pass over to number four. So again, this is a timing issue. So we, first of all, we highlight the coach. Because that puck is in the red circle, we can take the puck. I'm going to add a timing point to the coach. And I'm just going to watch and see how the timing goes on all these, on the other parts of the drill. I can watch. As I slide that time, that timing dot, I can see how everybody is going. So right about, right about, uh, I would say about here, I'm going to make this bump, uh, dump pass. So I'm going to bank a pass across here to number four. So what I'm going to do to make that, I'm going to use my dump key. So with my dump key, I can make indirect passes off of the wall. So what I'm going to do now is I touch the wall where the pass is first, where the pass is first going to touch the wall here. And then where I want the puck to finish, I'm going to have to touch it down here and create another X. And now when I'm happy where that puck is, I click on the X to fix it in, in, the, in the correct position. Now with number four, okay, again, a timing thing. If I go, uh, if I slide my timing wheel here down below, I can move this across and I can see right here by moving that timing wheel at the top, I can see that that puck gets there, okay, around 6.7 seconds. Okay, I could just judge that by looking down below here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move number four, the first timing uh, position of number four up into this place right here. And then I'm probably going to slow that uh, number four down. So I'm going to put his speed at 14 kilometers an hour. And then I'm going to have uh, number four move down and go to pick up this, this puck. So now I can try to take it. Okay, so the timing seems to be okay. If the timing wasn't correct, I'd get a message up here that maybe I had to slow number four down, but the timing seems to be fine. And now I'm going to move, move to the corner to the wall around that pylon. And now I'm going to make another bank pass up to the D-man on the wall. So I'm going to bounce it here and bounce it right up here and touch it right on the stick of the D up at the blue line. And then this player, this player is going to come around the pylon and then drive into the net for a rebound. Okay, so now, number one, I'm going to take the puck. So here's a good example right now. So this player is too early at the puck position. Move the last timing to 10.4. So I know that player is there early. So if I take that last timing point and I move it to 10.4, okay, now I know that the, that the puck will be there, and that's the advantage of putting that extra timing point in there. So now I should be able to take that. 
Okay, so now I've taken the puck. And again, I'm going to maybe slow that defenseman down to about 14 kilometers coming across the blue line. So now that D is going to take that, that uh, puck. He's going to walk across here. And he's going to shoot. Now, the next thing that I want to show you, coaches, is how to create a rebound situation. So when you try to create a rebound, the first thing that you want to do is you can see that number three is in front screening. The goalie is in position. What I'll do is I'll go back into objects mode, and I'll just move that goaltender out of the way for right now because I want to complete this, this, uh, this uh, rebound situation. And when the goalie's in there, I cannot get the puck right on the goaltender because of a little force field that's around the goaltender. So when you're going to create a rebound off the goalie, first of all, create the rebound without the, the, the goalie in the net. It's much easier. And now to do that, I'm going to use, again, my dump key. If I use my shoot, my shoot key, it's, he's going to score a goal. But I want to create a rebound. So I'm going to use my dump key. And I'm going to go down, and I'm going to go right where the, the goalie's pads are, right, right about here. Okay? And then I want the rebound to come off in front of number four. So then I click here, and then I click on X to fix it in, in place. So now, if I'm going to just uh, uh, see how the timing looks on that, I can grab my timing wheel below. There's the pass up. So number four is going to have to stop there. I'm going to have to sl slow down four because that puck is going to be there before number four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow four down. So I click on number four. And to slow that player down, I grab the timing wheel below, and I can slide it to the right. There's the shot coming in. So the rebound's going to be right around there someplace. So now I'm going to move in, grab that puck. I click take. Okay, the timing seems to be okay. The puck is there. I'm going to shoot, and I'm going to click, uh, click the net. Okay, so there's the shot. And then well, I'm just going to stop right there. Okay? Now, right at this point uh, on this drill, this is where I would save it, okay? I would save it right now. I would save all my changes on the drill, right? And then this is where I would duplicate it. So this is where I would duplicate it because I'm going to use this first part of the drill also to, the two, to do the two-on-one. So I'm going to duplicate that right now. So there's the copy. So there's the copy. Okay, and there's the original. So we're going to go, there's the copy. Okay, original. So we're going to go back to the original and keep working on that. So now I go back into edit mode to continue my work. Okay, so this is going to be the two on O. So after the two on O, this defenseman, uh, I have to go back into action mode. Okay, this defenseman is just going to come around and is just going to line up back in this, this line back here. Again. Okay. And these guys are going to complete the two on O down here. So um, let's go to number one. I can see where the passing dot is. So I can, the, the number one is, is well, is in a perfect position. The gray dot is about two meters behind. And I'm going to make a pass to number one. Number one is going to come in and shoot. Okay. And uh, we'll have him score a goal and come in and stop. And then we'll have number two come in and stop as well. All right. So now a little timing trick. So for uh, for this one right here. So number two started from this line right here. So after this first uh, repetition, I'm going to have number two come back and line up on this this line down here. I'm going to have number one line up in the different line. Now what we're going to look at right now is advancing players in line so that it looks natural. So you can see number two left early in this drill, but we want to move number six up here, and we want to move number seven up behind it. But we want it to look natural. So what I'm going to do is I click on number six, and I'm going to advance the first timing spot just to number two leaves right there. Now, when number two leaves, okay, now I can move number six up into place, but because the default speed is 20 kilometers an hour, it's going to look really jerky. So what I'll do is I'll move number six up, and then I'll slow number six down to about six kilometers an hour to make it look really natural. And then I have to do the same with number seven, okay? So I'm going to move the first timing spot of number seven to number six starts moving. You see number six start moving. Number six starts moving, 
okay? And then I'm going to move number seven up, okay? And then move number seven down. Or, or sorry, reduce the speed to six kilometers an hour. And we have to do the same down here, okay? So for number uh, forward number five, number one is leaving. We'll wait to number one across the blue line. We'll, new, we'll move number one up into position to get pucks. We'll slow uh, number five down. And then with number eight, we'll do the same thing. We'll move number eight. When number five starts moving, okay, then we'll start number eight moving up in line and then slow that player down, okay? So now I have a space. So when number two now wants to come back and line up behind number eight, I have a space for him to go. Now, little trick. Number two comes in and stops. I want number two just to pause for like a half a second, you know, before he comes in and leaves to make it look like he stops and then goes. And the, how I do that is I'll, I'll, I'll click on number two. I'll add two timing points, okay? And then that second timing point, I might advance maybe 0.2 seconds, just so it looks like he stops and goes. You can make it a half a second. And then, then the player will come back off to the outside, come back and line up. And if you don't want him skating like a mad fool, you just take him and slow him down to about 18 kilometers an hour. And uh, now with number number one, same thing. I'll put two timing points on it. And then I'll advance that about a half a second. And then I'll have number one come back along the wall. So let me, let me redo that. Have number one come down along the wall and then back to the back of the line here. Okay, and again, slow them down to about 18. All right, so let's take a look at our drill so far and see how everything looks. So we'll go into uh, just 2D, the first part of it here. And watch, pay attention to those players in line as they move up. You can see number five and eight and six and seven are moving up into, into space. The timing down below looks pretty good. They got the rebound, they score on the rebound. Number one lines up and number one and number two go back and line up in their places. So that first part of the drill looks pretty good, okay? So now we have to start number defense from number one on the other side. So that first part of the drill looks pretty good. So number one, again, number one is going to start skating. He's going to start this part of the drill when those first two forwards come over the blue line. So I have to advance the starting position of number one to the point right here where number one clears. Okay, so now I can take number one. Same thing. I'm going to come up and start that pivot. Pivot backwards, make a little, make a little, uh, move my butt a little bit here. Player number one, okay, I'm going to take that puck. I'm going to add a timing point. I'm going to move that timing point, advance it across till number one gets in position. Starts right about here. I'm going to start number one skating. Right about there. I'm going to pass to number one. Number one, okay, we, we continue backwards skating. We loop into here. I click forward to pivot up. Okay, pivot up. And then I'm ready to make that pass. Now, with number one, I go back to number one. And this is where the, the gray dots come in handy. You can see as I move number one that the gray dot, I don't want to run into that other player clearing the area. So I know exactly where it is. So number one's going to come down. And right about here, I'm going to cut up in position. So that right here and right there, I'm going to make the pass because I know the gray dot is at the, at the right position. Pass to number one. You can see where I'm making the pass, the gray dot is about two meters behind number one. Number one, I'm going to just make a couple of strides here. And then we have player two. Player two is our stretch, our stretch player. So I'm going to move along, move along, move along. So number, number one starts. So when number one starts to cut up the ice, Okay, now I'm going to start moving number two. And I can, I'm clear of that other player. I'm going to cut down here. Number one, they were at the same position. So I'm going to go a little bit further because the gray dot is now right under white number one. I'm going to go a little bit further. And now when I click number one, I can see the gray dot down here is about a meter and a half, two meters behind number two. So the timing should be good. I click pass. I click two. 
again, drives into the zone. Number one drives in behind. Okay, and they're in the same position for the two on O. And then after this defenseman, this defenseman here makes that pass. Then that defenseman is going to cut over here, avoiding that forward and get to the wall. And again, to, to make sure he's clear of that forward, I might slow that player down a little bit by advancing that last timing dot to about 14. I add two timing dots. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I, sorry, I backed up on this one. Doing the, the, I'm doing the two-on-one already here. So after this one here, this, after the pass, uh, that defenseman, as we know, he's just going to go back and line up again. Okay? And that's pretty much it, coaches. So that, that's the first part. We could keep on going that and do uh, some more repetitions, but that's the first part of, of that drill, of the two-on-o drill. The key parts of that one are getting the timing. It's always about the timing. And if you have any questions, when we start getting questions in, uh, uh, that's where we want to, uh, to really focus on that. So I have a question here from Paul, and it's basically, it says, what do the timing points do? Well, the timing points, Paul, when you go, let's say we, I'm just going to create an extra player here, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to create uh, a player up here, number eight. Okay, just for demonstration of timing points, basic timing points. So when I go into action and I click on number eight, okay, the timing points down below, you use these to set the timing of all your players, the passing and their movements. So all players, when they start moving, if I just start this player moving right now, that player is going to start moving at zero seconds and that player is going to be doing 20 kilometers an hour. Now, when I hit my undo button, let's go back into here and then action. Now. For number eight, if I want that player to start skating at, say, let's say two seconds, I take that first timing point, I move it along two seconds, okay, and then move the player. Now, once I've moved the player, that player is going to start skating at two seconds, and the player is going to be doing 20 kilometers an hour. So now with that timing point I just moved, you also use timing points to adjust speed. So I can take that last timing point, and as I move it to the right, you can see the time advancing. And as the time advancing, the speed is dropping because the player is getting to the same spot, okay, but it's using more time. So that means it must be going slower. So there the player is only going six seconds. So now when I play that, if you focus on number eight, okay, two seconds are going to go by, start skating, doing six kilometers an hour, and then stops. Now, the next part of it, is every time that a player moves on this playing surface and you want that player to pause or stop for any amount of time, you have to adjust that down on the, on, the, on the timeline down here. Let's say for player eight, I want player eight to wait for two seconds, and then I want player eight to go line up along the boards. So what I would do, I have to create a space of two seconds down here. So what I'm going to do is I'll click one, two timing points. I'll move that last timing point ahead. It was at... 4.43 so we'll go to 6.43 and you can see when I click on that that there's no speed it's not moving but the just time is advancing and then when I move number eight I'm going to move number eight to the wall very quickly and then uh, then we're okay so that number eight now is going to wait two seconds he's going to skate a little distance at six kilometers he's going to wait two seconds and then he's going to hustle over to the wall so that's 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 a basic basic uh, thing for uh, for timing points but in the tutorials there's some very good tutorials on timing points now because i can go into objects and because that player is not involved in a uh, player action i can get rid of by just by clicking the x and get rid of that player okay so let's move on now so we've got this here that's that's pretty much the, a lot of the points there if there's any any questions coaches about any of the the techniques i showed you right there uh, you can fire them in now and we'll try to get them as we go along so let's Let's save our changes in this right now. And then again, once I click save, to click the, uh, I can adjust now the, uh, uh, the thumbnail, what we call the thumbnail print, is the, the impression that you're going to get uh, when you print this out. And maybe, maybe we'll leave it there. That's a pretty good spot right there. So that I click done. And I'm going to click save. So now we've saved all the, uh, we've saved all the changes to that. So the next part is now we're going to go down to, and we're going to go down to our copy. So you can see down below, this is the copy that we made where we're going to create the two-on-one. So now, 
I open up the copy and the first and I go into edit and the first thing we're going to do is change the title so if I do save it I can go find it afterwards so I'm just going to uh, click this back up and change the title to the two-on-one and then I'm going to put uh, okay uh, web so this is the web the web version of it and then I'm going to click on the ice surface okay uh, and there was another question just came in they said they can see it's being recorded and yes this will be available the recording of this will be made available to everybody so everybody will get an email of where they can find this okay uh, that was from Larry uh, so thanks Larry for the question so yes there will be a recording uh, made available to all the coaches that you can watch at a later date okay so now we created that first part of the drill as a two on all so the first thing we need to do is we need to have a defenseman step up to, to defend this uh, two on one so if I go into action mode now so number one would normally be the first one to take it back the other way but we're gonna have number one start out by defending so we're gonna start with the first one removing it across here okay so here comes here comes the stretch guy number two so right about here I'm gonna have defenseman number one step up and I can see where that I can see where that gray dot is I can see where number two is cutting across so I want to be with him shadowing him and right about here I'm gonna flip around and skate backwards okay and here I might slow it down a little bit okay because I want to be I want to be my end position is I want to be right here so now I can adjust that if I go down to my timing dots down below and I adjust that you can see as I'm moving this along okay as I move that timing point along as I'm slowing defense number one down there at 15 kilometers an hour I have defenseman one in the perfect defending position against number two okay so number two I'm gonna make my pass to number one and then we'll have number one drive in and uh, we'll have him hit a post so hitting a post I use my dump key I touch the base of, of the net I'm gonna to touch the boards and then I'm gonna end up over here so I'm gonna have I'm going to have that puck hit the post, hit the boards, and then come over here. Let's do that again. Okay, so to get a rebound off of the post, I use my dump key. I hit the post. I, I touch it at the base of the post. I touch the wall. And then I'm going to finish with the puck out here in the middle. And then I click on the X to fix it in spot. And I'm still going to come in and stop at the net. And this defenseman now, how is he going to react? Well, he's going. Let's slow him down to about 14 kilometers an hour. I'm going to have he's still skating backwards, so he's going to come in and right about right about here. He knows that he's kind of he has a, he has an issue. That guy's coming in, so he's going to come and maybe try to step up here, maybe pivot and step up on the challenge of shooter. But the shot's gone, and then he's going to turn around and stop at the net. So let's take a look at the timing of that, coaches. So we'll go into play. And let's watch that one in 3D. So again, coaches, when I'm when I'm in 3D, it might seem a little bit jerky when I'm moving it around, but uh, on the animation looks good. So we're just going to watch the D-man. So the D-man is going to step up, turn around, get the timing correct. He's a little bit deep. The pass is out there. Step up, defend it. Too late. Back down. Stop in front. Okay. So then that's how you you do this. So then number two, number two is going to leave. He has to move up when number one leaves. Okay, when number one leaves, number two is going to move up in line. And then, again, moving up in line, coaches, move the player up, slow the player down to about six kilometers an hour. I'll do the same with number three. I'll wait till number two starts to move. Okay, right here. Then I'll move number three up. And then slow number three down. Now, here's the thing, coaches, about timing points again. Paul. Uh, again, this is a good question about just knowing the basis of timing points and coaches once you master how and when to use timing points That's 90% of the battle. So in this case, I've already moved the player once Okay, but now the player has to wait because these players are right here the, that player can't stop So I have to create a little space of time here where that player is waiting and I do that again with timing points I add one two timing points I take that last timing point and I'm going to move it to the point where number one gets into the zone right here, the clears. And now, now I can have number defenseman number one 
step up. Okay, turn. I hit my pivot. I make a nice clean pivot, back up, do my little wiggle waggle. Okay, and the way we go again. So now the, the difference is in this drill, coaches, is once this player uh, makes this pass, he'll go back, take the shot, but after the shot, then that player steps up and defends the next rush coming the other way. So uh, right now, uh, that's, those are the, the main parts of this drill, uh, uh, of seeing that. And again, to go back, we'll show you what the finish one looks like. I'm just going to save the changes I've made to that one. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at the stretch pass two on one. So this is what the finish drill looks like again. One step shot, pivots back, but takes a pass from forward one. Forward one curls in, takes a pass, and then headbands it up to number two on a stretch pass. Number one D now goes to the wall, takes a pass up, shoots through the screen, and then turns to take a two on one coming the other direction. And you can see number two step up now. Number two after the shot steps up to to uh, front and gap up on the number six coming the other direction. Okay. So I think that's as far as like doing that drill, coaches. We did. We showed a lot of different technique right now. Now, if you have any, if you have any questions, uh, we can go into specifics now about any any questions that you have about drill drawing, not necessarily about this particular drill. Uh, and for your coaches, if you'd like to have the drills that you've seen tonight, whether it's the three-on-one, three-wide drive, the three versions of that, if it's the, the template for the U8 circuit, if it's the two-on-O and the two-on-one, if you want any of those drills, you just send me an email, coaches, and I will send those to you as individual files so you can keep those. So we'll just open it up now to any questions. Uh, one question that came in from Dean, and the question is, uh, do you show whiteboard drill demonstration in the locker room before practice? And also, uh, with your whiteboard before drill is on the ice, or do you demonstrate with coaches before the on-ice porches of the drill? Uh, that's a good question, Dean. And we find, like, uh, when I first started using, uh, before I started using Hockey Coach Vision, uh, sometimes I would post drills in the dressing room. Uh, most of the time, not. I would just go over and I would draw them on the on the ice, or if I had some, I would go over in the dressing room with them. If there were new drills, as the players got to know the drills, I would then uh, uh, I would then uh, post them sometimes. Uh, but a lot of times, I would just jump on the ice and they would know the warm up. I would tell them we're going to do such and such a drill. I would do a couple of drills and then I'd go to the whiteboard and I would draw up the next drill because I wanted to understand not so much. How we were doing the drill is why we were doing the drill. And what I found is that with, with Hockey Coach Vision now, I can focus a lot more on why we're doing the drill and not spend as much time as how we're doing the drill. So now the way that I do it now with Hockey Coach Vision, uh, with my teams, and a lot of coaches are doing this, is that what they'll do is they'll create the practice the night before and they'll send it off to their players. And for younger players, I know if you've got eight, nine, ten-year-old players, that's tough to do if they don't have emails or not checking their emails. But what you can do with the younger players is you have you send it to their parents. So in the roster section of Hockey Coach Vision, you create a roster, one of the players, one of the parents, and you can send them the practice the night before. So on the way to the rink, they can hand little Johnny or little uh, Amy uh, their iPads or their tablets in the back of their vehicle that they can go over the drills while they're driving to the rink. And the same thing at the rink. Like with my players, they would they knew that every night before practice, they would get uh, the practice for the next day between 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock at night. Now, these guys are professional players, so they're, they're expected to know this stuff. So when they show up to rink the next day, we do a video session. If it's a new drill we're doing that day, possibly at the end of practice, I would, I would or sorry, at the end of the video section, I might show one or two drills if we're doing new drills, uh, just to go over the points of them. But most of the time, I would, I would uh, create a PDF uh, within Hockey Coach Vision of the practice. That would be posted in the dressing room as a reminder to the players. But once we jump on the ice, they're expected to know the drills and go. So a typical practice is we would jump on the ice. I would do two or three drills, warm-up drills, technical drills. We would have a pause. There would be a water break. They would all come in to me. 
I would give them the talking points. I would be telling them why we're doing the next two points, the, the key points of the next two drills that we're going to be doing. And then we would execute the next two drills. And then everybody comes in, and then I would probably go to the whiteboard. So the players knew that they had to know at least the first five drills going into practice. And the players generally really liked it because it really it creates a really high rhythm at the beginning of practice. They don't want to listen to me standing around talking for two minutes or three minutes, uh, drawing up a, a drill and discussing it and talking about it. They want to get out there and they want to do it. But it's important that they know why they're doing it. So it's important they know the coaching points on that. So thanks for that question, Dean. I, that was a really good question. Uh, Let's see if we've got any other questions coming at this time. Okay, next question. This is, again, from uh, Dean. Uh, what is the time spent on skills, conditioning, and drills along with game-like situations? And what is the proper balance of this for a one-hour practice? That's an excellent question. And I really think that it, it, it really depends on the age group and the level of the players that you're, you're coaching. Uh, obviously, for younger players, and I'm talking about seven, eight, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds, uh, the vast majority of the practice is going to be on skill development. So whether the, you know you have little warm-up games, little warm-up things, then you get into the, the drills or you get into your stations, if you're going to be doing station work, where you have a lot of station work. Now, in those stations, you can have little small area games within those stations to keep it fun. Because coaches, one thing that I've learned over the years is it has to be fun. And uh, the kids today and even players today, even the professionals, if it's not fun, it becomes really, really hard, dreary, boring work. So you have to have a, a, and keep a certain amount of fun into your practices. I think that's really essential. Uh, but so as the players get older, the, the, the technical part of it, the, the, the technical as far as the skill development, that might come down a little bit more. Then you get into more tactical uh, type of drills and then into game type situations. So at a professional level, at a professional level, I had, I had a couple of Czech coaches that really got me thinking about this. And in the Czech way of development, uh, their thinking is that, and, and, and I'm talking about midget AAA and above, university, junior, pros for sure, is that maybe one-third of the practice is technical. So that would be the first three, four drills that you're running in a practice. Those are technical. And then you've got 30%, 33% is tactical. So these drills are going to be part of your system, however you decide to play whether it's neutral zone, uh, counters, transition, uh, gap drills, that has to mimic the, the way that you practice has to be part of how you're playing. So any drill that you're doing, coaches, it should be a part of your game. So the middle part of the, of the practice is going to be uh, focused on the tactical part of it. And then a third of it, a third of it should be game situation. Now, game situation doesn't mean five-on-five -five scrimmage all the time. Game situation can be a small area game. It can be special teams play. It can be drills that go from a three-on-two and transition to a back check three-on-three. Three. Those are, for me, tactical, but also game-like situations. So to, to just to, to get back to the original question, how much do you, do you dedicate? For younger players, you're going to, I'm going to say seven, eight-year-olds, uh, 60, 70, 80% of that practice should be on developing technical skills. When they get to 9 and 10, you can have a little bit of tactical and then get into game situation. But the older that they get, then you get that, that balance where you get 33, 33, 33, where you have skill development, tactical, game situation. But uh, at the start, coaches, really work on those skills. But remember, work in those little small area games to have, let the kids have some fun. Okay? Uh, can you loop drills? Okay. So that's a very good question. And that's one I've been, uh, been throwing at my technical guys for, for, uh, for a while now. Uh, but they promised me, maybe not in this next update, but in the, one, uh, the update after that, we will have a loop key. And the loop key, what it's going to do, coaches, is that, for example, when you have your practice, you have six, seven, eight uh, drills, or you might have a power play breakout or a face-off play in there. And you can take your phone into the dressing room and plug it into a Beamer, or if you have the, the luxury of having a television, you can plug your phone into the uh, into your uh, big screen TV or your TV, and then hit the loop key. And then what it'll do, it'll just keep you know playing the drills one after the other in 2D, so that the players as they're getting dressed or coming in or you know going in, they can check out all the drills and see them playing at the same time, where you don't have to be there and physically change them from one to the other. So I'm personally looking forward to that, and I've had uh, a few coaches ask me about that over the years. Okay. Uh, we're getting going. We're coming up on 50 minutes here, coaches. So 
Uh, if you're with me, as long as you're asking questions, we're kind of hoping to keep this under an hour. Uh, but if you have questions, we'll keep it going. So um, another comment from Dean, actually a compliment. He says, the 3D is great, much more engaging and realistic. Thank you, Dean. We're always looking for feedback. And not only the positive stuff, coaches, uh, our coaches, all you guys have been great. And, and ladies, if we have any ladies tonight, all our coaches have been great in helping us develop what we've been doing at Hockey Coach Vision. So many of our features have been a direct result from um, uh, requests from our coaches about can you do this or can you add that or change this a little bit. So please, uh, we don't need pats on the back all the time, although we appreciate them and all the good stuff that comes my way, I'm sure to send along to uh, to uh, my partners and, and Franjo in the office and Ivan and Tommy, our, our, our technical guys, and Philip, our, our number one animator and our CEO. It's always good to get a positive feedback, but to trust me, we want to know if there's something that you need or something that's not working for you. So uh, I have another question from Larry. Uh, since using HCV, I've never used a whiteboard on the ice. I send the practice plan to my players. It's their responsibility to watch it and know the drills. If any of the players have questions, we address it in the locker room. This is the best on ice saver. Well, thanks for that, Larry. And I agree with you. Uh, when I'm talking to, to other coaches and trying to introduce coaches to the game, you know, I ask, I'll, I'll ask them this. The first question I'll ask some coaches is, how much are you paying for ice time? We know that ice time is expensive. And if you're paying $200, $300, $400 dollars for ice time, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the ice standing around explaining stuff. So coaches, I really believe that uh, with, with any, any group of coaches, whether they're eight-year-olds or they're professionals, if I can save six, seven, eight minutes of me talking on the ice every practice, that's a good thing. Because trust me, I can talk all night. And the co players get tired. They get tired of the coaches talking. So anything we can do to eliminate coaches talking, I think that's a good thing. Okay. So uh, next question is from Renee. So Renee says, how can I integrate sound into the drill? Good question. Okay. Let's flip back into uh, share. I'm going to go back in. I'm just going to show you how to add uh, into uh, a drill. Okay. So let's pick, let's pick the one we just, uh, let's pick one of these that doesn't have sound on it. Uh, okay. So this is a three wide drive. Let's make a copy of this one. I'll make a copy of this one. And uh, let me just move this out of the way. I'm gonna duplicate this. Okay, so now we have the copy. So now I'm gonna open up edit. So this can be any drill. And this is, so once I go into that, once I've done drawing my drill, when I go into play mode, okay, uh, once when I wanna add uh, my voiceover, in play mode, in edit mode, or when you're creating it, you, in play mode, you go down here, and you see where it says mic on. So now I click my mic on, and now when I click the red dot, it's going to record. So here we go. Defenseman one slides across the blue line, delivers a pass to one. Slides it down to forward two, quick across three, and both forward step up ices. Defenseman number one wheels around the cones to confront the other ones wide. Keys on this one, drive the net for rebounds. Okay, so now when I play that back, Okay, you get the picture. So now you can see that this is on here. So now to save that, I would go into save. I would set my thumbprint. Okay, and now I'm going to save it. And now when I've saved this drill, coach, as you can see, I know this one has audio on it because it has a little speaker on it right here. So I know that this file has audio. Okay, good question. All right, let's go back out. Let's, uh, let's go back into this and see what uh, we have here. I'll take a, a few more questions here. Uh, let's see, coaches. Uh, okay, Larry said also, Larry Roca also said about posting the PDF in the locker room. That's a really great point because it's not enough just to send them uh, the, the, the practice to their, their cell phones. And we know, I think it's the greatest thing that we know that our players, especially the, the players 10, 11, when they get to be 12, 13, 14, they're spending hours a day on their cell phones. But it's just not enough. So when you create that PDF and you post the PDF in the dress room, it's a nice little reminder of the players as they get ready to go on the ice. Just a little quick reminder of what drills and what sequence they're doing uh, before they go on the ice. Uh, great, uh, great point. Uh, Coach Doug, to send your players or coaches, you would go to roster and add their email. How do you add the drill to the email? Okay, good, uh, good question, Coach. All right, let's go back in and we'll uh, share screen. We'll show you how to uh, create a practice real quick and how to share it. Okay. so. When I'm in here, if I go down on a package list here, okay, let's, let's say we have this USA U20 package. 
And to create a package quickly, coaches, let's let's create one here. Let's call it uh, web test. Okay, done. Okay, so there's my web test. So I'm going to put in these three drills. So I'm going to drag and drop that in here. I'm going to put the three wide drive plus. I'm going to put the, the three on two. And I'm going to put this back pressure drill in there. Okay, so there's, there's my practice. There's my practice. So now when I want to send that, uh, I'm going to have, I can go down to send. Okay, and I can click team. And I can put in my, my U20 team. Click next, put in a message, and send it. Now, the thing is this. Once you have your teams or your players in place, I can click send. I can send it to an individual player. Okay. So all these, all these, uh, these are all individuals. So I can set in, I can set these to whatever. Some have coach accounts, some have players accounts. So I can send them to one, two, three, four, five, as many as I want, or I can send it to the whole team. So first of all, but before you can do that, you have to create a roster. Okay. So now let's just go back into the roster area here. So the roster area, and again, uh, this is for Coach Doug. So we go into our settings area here, okay, and then I go into roster. Now, these are different teams that I have on my, on my, uh, 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 my roster section here. So if I'm going to add, I can add a team. There's a plus sign over here uh, a little further on. But once I have my team, I've created my team. I'm going to add a player to uh, to number uh, to my U20. Okay, so I I click on my U20, and you can see here I can edit I can edit the name of it or whatever. I'm going to click create new player, and I'm going to put I'm going to put uh, let's see I'm going to put uh, me in uh, anyway. Okay, and oh sorry, I would put in my name. Okay, and my, my email, uh, okay, and then, then I have to remember, coaches, you have to choose what team I'm going to put it on. So I'm going to put it on the U20 team, okay? I can put in my phone number, my number, number 23, and I guarantee, coaches, that I had number three before Michael Jordan did and before Philip Kostovich did. And then I was a big strapping right defender. And now I have to make sure, very, very important, coaches, that the email is correct. So once everything is correct, I'm going to save it. Okay, so now when I scroll down on my U20 roster, I will see that I just added Larry Harris. He's number 23, right-hander. There's my email address, and it's already found me, okay, as a coach. Now, if, if I wouldn't have that, if I wouldn't be, say, for example, if I write, if I'm adding Johnny Hockey, to my, uh, to my roster, come across here, I would then click send invitation, and Johnny Hockey would receive an invitation to his email. And once I click that, it will show invitation sent. And then once that player is registered, then you will see the player, uh, the player icon up here. Then you know that you can send them stuff through Hockey Coach Vision because they had a registered account. Okay? So uh, I hope that answers your, your, uh, your question, Doug. And again, if there's any other questions, uh, just write to me directly, and I will uh, I will get back to you and answer your questions as much as you like. Um, can you show us how to create a practice plan with mini drills, or is a tutorial for that? Yes, Paul. There is a tutorial for that. If you go into our, our website, uh, hockeycoachvision.com, and go into support, all the tutorials are in there. So there's a really great tutorial on creating a package plan and sharing. Okay. Uh, from uh, Larry, how often do you use small ice games or small area games with professional players. We actually use them a lot because uh, one thing that I've known over the years is because, first of all, I was a player for a very, very long time, and I love small area games. All players love small area games, whether they're six years old or they're 46 years old. We all love small area games, and I find they're a great way to teach the game. They're one of the greatest ways to teach hockey sense. Because when you think about it, how did Wayne Gretzky become Wayne Gretzky? Well, Wayne Gretzky, you know, he spent a lot of time playing two-on-two, three-on-three on, two, three on his backyard, just figuring stuff out. And players will figure stuff out by themselves. And uh, it's, a, it's a great thing, and it's a great energizer. Because the players are working hard, they're having fun. And when you can combine working hard with having fun and they're learning stuff and figuring stuff out, then you're having a good practice. 
So oftentimes, like with, with, with at a pro level, we use a lot of we, we we do a lot of tactical drills. We do a lot of tactical drills and create game like situations. Uh, but we'll also sometimes, you know, when you're especially if you have a week off or you have a, a block of time off, I often find the middle of the week we'll have we'll have a challenge series or we'll have Olympics. And what we'll do is we make up two teams. Uh, when you're in Canada or North America, it's it's very easy. It's usually the West against the East. Uh, but you might make North and South or, you know, one side of town against the other side of town. But anyways, you make it a competition. And I'll set up the Olympics where I'll, I'll, I'll do three small area games and we'll get points for each game. And then you'll have to have something at the end of it. I mean, the worst one, the most extreme one is where at the end of the at the end of practice, the losing team has to take the other team's skates off. Now that that's pretty tough. That gets fur flying, and it's not every time that everybody's going to come in and take the other guy's skates off. But anyways, good question. Okay, uh, this is from Carp. Okay, hey Larry, you've been very generous over the years sharing some drills with us that we can use our specific age groups. Is there an area that might be able to be built, or is it available currently for all members of HEB to share some drills with other coaches that can use for their teams? Now that's a great that's a great uh, great comment, and we've talked. We've talked about that, uh, uh, Carp, and that's something that we have that's in discussion right now about how we might do a drill sharing platform or how we might create. We were thinking about maybe doing something where we would do a collection of drills and maybe sell them, like, for example, at Christmas, before Christmas time, and then donate whatever we get to that, donate to a charity, uh, that you know, a common charity, that a really good one. I mean, there's lots of places to send money right now. Coaches, I hope you're all social distancing and staying safe. Just a word on social distancing. I always thought that's what some of my wingers were doing when they're going into the corners sometimes. It looked like social distancing. But uh, uh, getting back to the point, that's a really good point, and that's something that uh, that we are talking about is having some type of player platform where coaches can share drills amongst themselves. Okay. Uh, will you have a way to draw drill, uh, goalie drills in more detail? Uh, this is from Tyler G. Uh, yes, Tyler. Uh, right now, uh, what you're looking at in our in our platform is the first generation of goaltenders, which is really great. When we first created it, we didn't even have goaltenders. So for uh, a couple of years, I was just putting big old defensemen in there. But now we have goaltenders, but they're limited, and we know that is that it's it's hard to structure them to get them side shuffle and do things. But the next generation of goaltenders is a couple of things. First of all, they'll be able to side shuffle, and we want them to be make a basic butterfly save, and they should be able to automatically track the puck. So we're hoping and we're developing this now, and hopefully we'll get to that sometime. I don't want to promise things I can't uh, deliver, but my, my technical guys have told me that's possible to, to come up with a solution for that the, the, the goalies can automatically track pucks in certain areas and not have to draw them. But, yes, we want to be able to uh, make goalie uh, uh, animations in more detail. Okay. Okay. A question from Dean again. What is the best dry land, best outline for 12-year-old players for strength and conditioning? Well, at 12 years old, uh, we have a really great uh, uh, program uh, from Patrick uh, uh, in our, our drill store for off-ice training. And uh, we have it for, for uh, injury prevention and also for dynamic workouts. And most of those drills are done uh, normally using only your body weight or with very, very limited weights. So for players at 12 years old, you have to be very, very, very careful on what you're doing with them as far as overloading their muscles and overloading their skeleton, their, their frame at that age. So they're in, a, in, a, in an age where they're, they're really uh, – sorry, coaches, I lost you there for a second. Uh, but uh, I was just saying that uh, for the, uh, the uh, players of that age, you have to be careful. But best thing is, is using exercises – and drills and things that where they're using their own body weight for resistance. But even like one player holding onto a hockey stick and the other one doing pull-ups on that is a very good exercise for 12-year-olds. Uh, but there's a lot of good stuff out there on the web. But the first, the number one thing is you don't want to overload the uh, you don't want to overload their 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 frames at that age. Um, okay, here's a question uh, from Kevin. Kevin, uh, sorry, I uh, came late to this. No problem, Kevin. Uh, is, does HCV have the ability to have a white coaches board? Not yet, but that's also on the uh, on our development board. We want to make that um, part of what we do is that we have the option within the app just to flip to a whiteboard section where we can quickly draw something up 
and either show it to our players or take a like a photo, like a snap photo of it, that we can import it as a photo, and then we have time later on to animate it. But yes, that is something that will be coming down the line. One thing that's also exciting, coaches, is that uh, we're going to be having a presentation mode uh, where you'll be able to actually build in a telestrator. You'll be able to draw lines freehand, or you'll be able to stop the drill and draw or highlight players or highlight areas, or build into the drill where you're building it. You'll be able to pause it, telestrate certain areas, highlight players, and really give a, a really an added feature to be able to explain to uh, your players uh, exactly what your vision is for the drill and the key and the teaching points. So, uh, coaches, that's now an hour and five minutes uh, that we've been going. So, I thanks a lot. Uh, we ended up with a little around 40 of uh, you coaches like dropping in. And again, uh, this is going to be made available uh, to you. So, if you want to pass it on to other coaches, there'll be a link for that that you'll you'll get sent. That you'll be able to send it on to other coaches that might find this interesting. And uh, I really appreciate uh, working with uh, with everybody. It's been a great adventure so far with Hockey Coach Vision, and uh, we're far from finished. Uh, we have a lot of things we're working on, and uh, we appreciate the greatest salespeople that we have with Hockey Coach Vision are our coaches, that you coaches out there. And every time we get a referral or everybody says, I was talking to somebody about, about this and they showed me to that, we really, really appreciate that because I like to tell people, I think we have the greatest drill drawing program out there that nobody really knows about so thanks for all your help and uh keep that feedback coming back and uh good luck stay safe uh we will get through this and uh, there's going to be a hockey season coming down the road so this is a great time while you're self-distancing or you have to be at home you're cooped up to work on those draws and tactics and again anytime you need anything anything from me coaches uh, just to shoot the, the breeze or talk hockey or you want to exchange drills please get in touch so stay safe, everybody. It's uh, been great uh, doing this. And look forward, we're going to have some more uh, uh, these type of webinars. We're going to have guest coaches come in and talk about different things and talk about different subjects. So if there's certain subjects that you would like to have or have us talk about, please send us an email, and uh, we'll see what uh, we can get into our line coming up. So God bless. Stay safe and uh, talk to you soon. Cheers.